Good afternoon. How's everyone? Praise the Lord. It's always a privilege for me to get invited to this. This is really special, and I enjoy very much sharing the word about healing. And uh, just happy to be here. Praise God. I want to say a special, special shout out to Alex and Julie, who I think are watching from Mexico. I just got back from Mexico, and uh, I'm still full. And uh, they, they feed you well. So, anyway, hi, Alex and Julie, and all of you, and all the others that are watching online. We welcome you to this, and, and uh, I believe you're going to get blessed in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Let's, why don't we start with some prayer? Hallelujah. Father, praise God. What an opportunity this is to sit in your presence, to sit under your word, and to receive, Father, the power of your word into our lives, the power of your spirit into our lives, the word which, was, which is medicine to our flesh, the spirit which quickens our mortal bodies. And Father, we're in that environment right now. Together, we come together where two or three are gathered in your name. You are in the midst. Father, we declare that you are in our midst right now. Father, by the spirit within and just the atmosphere without, you are here. And if you are here, healing is here. And we thank you, Father, for that healing power. We thank you that we don't even have to wait to the end of the message. We can get healed right now. We receive, Father, what you have for us right now. We thank you for your presence, your word, your power. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I want to share something with you that uh, is something that the Lord spoke to me a few months back, and I don't know if this is a new message for you to hear, but it's something I have not shared before myself in this way, and so... I want to start with you, if you will, in Romans chapter 6, verse 16. We're going to talk about lordship this afternoon. Romans 6, 16, and I'm going to put probably a little bit different spin on it than maybe what you've heard before. In Romans 6, 16, it says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. All right, so what I want to talk about with you this afternoon is helping us understand. Many times healing is just one thought process away. If we can just get our minds renewed, get our minds, our, our way of thinking changed, get some stronghold out of the way perhaps that we've been carrying around that we didn't know about, some wrong thought, some lie, or some revelation of a truth That truth can make us free and we can receive healing just by getting something adjusted in our thinking. When we talk about lordship, and it's talking about, let me read this again. It says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. And so my question is, what is it that we are serving or whom or what are we serving in our lives. And all of us would immediately say, well, Jesus, we're serving Jesus. And I would say, amen, yes to that. But practically, who are you serving or what are you serving? Or in other words, in the reality of your life, who's in charge? Who is the Lord of your life? And I don't mean theologically. I mean, what is lording itself over your life? And we'll take it, and you, we're going to go in different directions with this, but in the context, basically, of is sickness the Lord of your life, or is Jesus the Lord of your life? Because to whom you, you submit yourself, his servant you are. And we could put a lot of things, we could say, fill in the blank. Who are you submitting yourself to, or what are you submitting yourself to? Now, I want to take you to John chapter 5. And I want to show you some, get this, get this ball rolling with an example that we're going to read a little bit in detail here. And then I'm going to give you some more examples after that so that I can make this point. So let's go to John chapter 5. We're going to read 1 through 9. And I guess if I turn to John chapter 5, it would help. Okay. Okay, John 5, verse 1. 
After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. We should probably be familiar with this story. Most of us are. And as I was considering this topic of lordship, and I came across this story and began to meditate on it, I realized in this story, we have a man, now remember, who, to whomever you are submitted, that is your Lord. We have a man that is submitted to two different things here. First of all, he's been sick for 38 years. He's been living a life of complete uh, inability in which he is prostrated on the, ce we'll say cement or whatever, the stone floor of this pool of Bethesda on the, on the sides for 38 years and basically his life revolves around his sickness, or we can say it a different way, everybody else that knows him has to revolve around him and his sickness. Or in other words, lordship has been, I'll say established, sickness has become lord. Sickness determines who takes him and puts him there. Sickness determines who comes and brings him back. Sickness determines who takes him food. Sickness determines who comes and, and plays cards with him. Sickness has determined who his circle of friends is. Sickness has become his lord. Are you following me? Do you understand? All right. The second thing that I, I am going to suggest to you, and you don't have to agree with me in this, but that he's, he's also a servant of a superstition. Now, I'm going to say it's a superstition. I know the scripture makes it sound like it's a truth, and, and it very well could be. But I cannot find in the Old Testament anywhere where God says, and I will send an angel to trouble the waters, and you will be healed. I can't find that anywhere in the law. In fact, what I find in the law is, if you obey the voice of the Lord, none of the sicknesses which I put upon you shall I put upon Egypt shall I put upon you. That's what I find in, in the word. I find that if you obey the voice of the Lord, you shall be healed. I find that in the word. I don't find anything about an angel and water. So uh, that, that confuses me somewhat. I don't know if any of you are aware, but there are a lot of superstitions in the world where people think if they do such and such, then something will happen and they will get healed. There's a lot of that going on. Perhaps that was going on here. In Matthew 13, verse 15, let me turn there real quick. This is a slight rabbit trail, and this will probably be the only one. And if you believe that. Okay, Matthew 13, 15 says, For this people, Jesus is speaking, For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should what? Heal them. Why weren't they healed? Their hearts had gotten hard. They had quit hearing. They weren't hearing God. They weren't hearing the law. They weren't submitted to God. They weren't submitted to the law. There was healing under the law. But again, I don't find anything about angels stirring up the water. So true or not, I'm going to suggest for the purpose of this message that it was a superstition. He was submitted to a superstition or a superstition had become Lord in his life. The superstition said, this is the only way you can get healed. And so he had been under the lordship of sickness for 38 years and under the lordship of a superstition, however long he had been there waiting to be the first one in the water. Those things now were the lords of his life. They determined his coming, his going, his expectations, his life. Everything revolved around these things he was submitted to. 
And so as I began to think about this, I thought, wow, there are a lot of other such examples in Scripture. I thought about the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood could have submitted to what the law said that as an unclean person, because of this constant issue of blood for many years, she was not to go out in public. In fact, under the law, she should have been outside the camp, so to speak. And so, legally, she shouldn't be in public. Legally, she shouldn't certainly be in a crowd of people. Legally, she should not be approaching a man to touch him. And she could have submitted to the lordship of all those religious constraints. And she could have said, those things are solid, they're fixed, they're established, I cannot do anything about my condition. And she would have submitted to the lordship of religion. Yet she didn't. Instead of submitting to the lordship of religion, she made her way out of the house, she made her way into the crowds, into the streets, she found the crowd following Jesus, she made her way through the crowd, she made her way up to Jesus, and she touched the hem of his garment because she wasn't willing to submit to the lordship of legalism. Praise God. And she received a healing. See, it's just an adjustment in our thinking sometimes. Just an adjustment in how we approach this. Are we going to submit to the lordship of something that is physical or something that is mental or something that is emotional or something that is religious? Are we going to submit to those things and and basically resist the grace of God that has been offered to us with no strings attached. Because we have in our minds this concept of lordship. We can think about blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus sitting by the roadside and Jesus and a crowd go by. This is in Mark chapter 10. And he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd turned and told him to shut up. And he could have said, excuse me, I'm sorry. And submitted to the lordship of inferiority. And the lordship of fear. When when the Lord spoke to me that thing, the lordship of inferiority, it sliced through my spirit. I thought, wow, I have been submitted to that lord before. The lordship of inferiority inferiority with people, inferiority about a number of things, inferiority about my educational deficiencies, we'll say, in the past, inferiority about money. Anybody here here feel inferior with money? I did for a long time. I'm not worthy of making a lot of money. That's an inferiority complex. That is a false lord. Inferiority about health inferiority about marriage, inferiority about our past. I've been divorced. I haven't, but some people have, and they feel inferior. All kinds of inferiorities are out there that assume lordship over people and suck the life out of them, suck the future out of them. And blind Bartimaeus was not willing to submit to the lordship of inferiority or the lordship of blindness or the lordship of the fact that he was a beggar or the lordship of the fear of people and what people think. Anybody ever been intimidated by other people? That's lordship. See, are you getting this? When you you allow yourself to be constrained by some outside force, you are submitting to a lordship, whether it be a person or a concept or an atmosphere or an inadequacy that you think you have. All those things are lords. And those are lords that aren't coming to bless you. They're coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And so blind Bartimaeus cried out all the more, it says in Mark chapter 10. He cried out all the more. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And that fact that he didn't submit to that, all those lordships I mentioned stopped Jesus in his tracks. And he turned and called Bartimaeus to come to him. And he said the words all of us would like to hear. What would you like for me to do for you? Anybody here want to hear those words from Jesus' mouth? Well, praise God, he's saying that today. That's the grace message. What would you like for me to do for you? But Bartimaeus had to get past his other lords. 
things that had bound him for so many years. Think about the Canaanite woman or the Syrophoenician woman in the different accounts of the Gospels who came to Jesus on behalf of her daughter. And she cried out after them and the disciples got all huffy and upset and said, Lord, send her away. And she comes up and, and he calls her a dog. And there are other dimensions and levels to this, but just on the surface level, that wasn't cool. And she could have submitted to the fact that she's a Gentile woman or in the eyes of the Jews, she's a dog. And she could have submitted that. We could take that into the, the areas of race. The lordship of so-called racial inequality that so many submit to. And she didn't. She's of a different race. And she's a Gentile. And she's a woman. And she's a dog. And she could have said, well, you know, okay, you're right. Goodbye. But she cried out after him and she said, Lord, Lord. And later he goes on to say, woman, mega is your faith. It's the Greek word mega. I like that. The only person in the scripture that has mega faith is this dog woman. See, she didn't submit to the lordship of her status. She didn't submit to the lordship of her inferiority or her race or anything else, the fact that she's a woman. How many women have been under the lordship of the fact they think they're inferior because men have told them they are? And religion has told them they are. And so they're under this lordship that has kept them boxed in and not receiving the blessings of God. And so she, she, she doesn't accept that and the, and, and the Lord finally says, go your way, your daughter is healed. See, she, was, she, wasn't, she wasn't going to submit, folks, to a Lord that was going to steal and kill and destroy. Sickness is a Lord that steals and kills and destroys. And sometimes you just have to say enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. This Lord has been around too long. Think, let's think of another example. Let's think of the guys that carried the, the fellow on the, on, the, on the cot, we'll say. And they get to where Jesus is. It's actually, if you study this out, this is Jesus' house. It's where he stayed, at least. And they carry this guy, and there's this huge crowd. It's so full inside that there's people outside, and they can't get in. It's a throng of people. They can't get in. And they didn't submit to the lordship of politeness. Wow, okay, we'll try in the morning. Maybe if we get here earlier. No, this is our day right now. And they make their way probably around to the back of the house and they go up on the stairs or what have you and there's tiles on the roof and they tear the roof apart. See, they're not going to submit to the lordship of, you can't do that. Don't you know you're going to get in trouble? And they let the guy down on a cot. See, is this making, is this jiving with you or are you getting this? That sometimes you just have to say enough with the submission to the junk, to the concepts, to the fears, to the inferiority, even to the politeness. And you move in and you say, I want the real Lord. I want to submit to the real Lord, the real Lord Jesus who has healing for me. It's already purchased, it's already ours, it's our inheritance. But as long as we keep submitting to other lordships, and I don't know about you, but when I started getting this message, as I was hearing these things in my spirit, I started ticking off things that I had submitted to. I realized, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh yeah. I've submitted to that and that and that and that and that and that and that, and that in my lifetime. And I began to recognize things and see things with a different perspective than I had in the past. And I realized, you know what? I want to clean the table of all the other lords. And I want Jesus to be Lord. I want his word to be the word in my life. And not just a perhaps maybe who knows if God's in a good mood kind of a thing. But no, this word is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Who is your Lord? What is your Lord? Now let's get a little bit, I'm going to throw some things out here and then we're going to start getting focused is the banker your Lord? Is your job your Lord? 
Is a lawyer your Lord? Is the political process that we're in right now, is that your Lord? What is it that controls you, that constrains you, that sets your mood for the day? External things, are they driving your mood, your attitude? Your bank account, does that drive your attitude? The way you approach life is sickness, your Lord, is the doctor's word, your Lord. What have we allowed to take over the lordship of our life? And yet in church, we'll all wave our hands and say, Jesus is Lord. Yeah, but is he really in your life the Lord? And I got to thinking about doctors in medicine, all the medical advances that we've made in all of this. And, and sometimes we get so uh, wrapped up in, in one particular pers perspective on healing that we tend to dismiss other perspectives on healing. And, and the Lord spoke to me, or I, I will say it was the Lord for me, and you can take it or leave it. But what I felt the Lord say to my spirit was, a doctor can be your servant, but he cannot be your Lord. And that really set me free. Because you can even get into religious bondage about going to the doctor. What's so-and-so gonna think if they find out I went to the doctor? All right, well, then there's a lordship there. There's a fear there. There's something going on there. You're not free. And so do I go to the doctor? There are times when I have to go to the doctor. But Barry, you're preaching healing school. <laughs> there are times when I've gotten healed miraculously. And there are times when I haven't. Well, I thought you had all the answers. You know, I thought I did too, but I don't. <laughs> you know? And so, but, but I got set free when I realized a doctor can be my servant and assist me in understanding how to get well, but he can't be my Lord. In other words, he doesn't have the final word. Jesus has the final word. And many, many are the times I haven't needed a doctor. I can't even begin to count of the things God has healed me from. But there have been a few occasions when I have needed to go to a doctor because I wasn't getting a breakthrough. No guilt, no condemnation, because he's not my Lord. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Praise God. I wonder what the rest of my message was. I, <laughs> let's go to Matthew 20, 25. Matthew 20, 25. But Jesus called them to himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles Lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. So I was meditating on this verse. The rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. So I'm going to spiritualize this a little bit just to give it a different context. I know it's talking about kings and rulers and such, but let's take it into a spiritual dimension. The rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Well, let's take it into the realm of unbelievers. The rulers of the unbelievers lord it over them. Now, we can talk about the powers of darkness, or we can talk about the powers of, of this, this natural earth. The rulers lord it over us, if you let them. The lawyer, the banker, the politician, the doctor, they try to rule over you and tell you where to go, what to do, how much you can do, and when you got to stop doing it. That's lordship. And whoever you submit yourself to obey, we just read in Romans 6.16, his, you're under that lordship. And Jesus is saying, these rulers lord it over us. And I thought, okay, well, wait a minute. What kingdom am I in? Well, Colossians 1.13 says, I have been translated, and you too, from the power of darkness... Well, the power of darkness is where the rulers of the Gentiles do their lording. I've been translated from the power of darkness into where? The kingdom of his dear son. So I have a choice to make. I can be there theologically and yet still be living over here practically under the lordship of darkness. Or I can just go ahead and move everything over here theologically and practically, that I want to be under the lordship of Jesus. In every aspect of my life, 
I don't want something coming to steal, kill, and destroy and be allowed into my life and me all of a sudden bending the knee to this thing for umpteen years, like the, some of the examples we've seen, just because I thought I had to. Well, that's just life, you know, life, you know. Well, that's not the abundant life. It might be your life, it might be somebody else's life, but it's not the abundant life. Because if the lordship that you're submitted to isn't blessing you and giving you life, then it's the wrong lordship. You're in the wrong kingdom. Got really quiet. I don't know. Am I, am I connecting here? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to be part of that. I'm not talking about a spirit of insurrection, rebellion against order in the community. I'm not, I'm not talking about those kinds of things. I'm talking about a spirit of insurrection and rebellion against the powers of darkness that are trying to keep you down and steal your life and keep you sick and keep you in, in, in a place of fear and intimidation and inferiority. I'm talking about that, yeah. Let's rebel against that. If you still have a spirit of rebellion, get it focused in the right direction. Amen? Praise God. Proverbs 23, 7. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Or we can say, as a man thinks in his heart. So in other words, how you think in your heart is establishing what lords you are submitting to. And if you say, well, I'm, uh, you know, I've just, this is genetic and this is just the way it is and just, well, okay, but that's a lordship. You've been translated into a different kingdom that has a different lord that's all about healing. But as long as your mind is still over here in this, this power of darkness, then that Lord is going to continue to have sway in your life. As you think in your heart, so are you. Are you sick? Are you limited? Are you a victim? Are you hopeless? Those are Lords. Those are all, all Lords that we perhaps have allowed into our lives that come to steal, kill, and destroy. And many times we don't even know it because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We don't, we're not even aware of it because it, it looks so much like normal life. This is the way everybody lives. We all live with stuff getting taken away from us and it's just normal life. But I don't know, maybe I'm nuts, but I don't think it has to be. I think in Romans 5, 17, we're called to reign in life. Amen. Amen. And so... It's, a, it's an adjustment in our thinking to move over to recognize, okay, I can see now because of what Barry's been sharing this afternoon and I can see I've had that Lord and that Lord and that Lord and that Lord and this really big one right here. And all of a sudden now I get it. So clear the table, moving over to the kingdom. This group's in the kingdom. I'm kidding. Well, I hope I'm not kidding. I hope you are too. Okay. Clear the table, move over into the light and decide in your heart, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord of my mind, the way I think. Jesus is Lord of my heart, the way I connect with God, of my communion. Jesus is Lord over my soul. Jesus is Lord over my spirit. Jesus is Lord over my body. Jesus is Lord over my relationships. Jesus is Lord over my marriage. Jesus is Lord over how I relate with my children. Jesus is Lord over how I relate with my place of employment. Jesus is Lord with my other relationships. Jesus is Lord with, over my influence in this world. Jesus is Lord over my divine purpose. Jesus is Lord. And this is a place we have to come to and we have to jump into this with both feet and declare Jesus is Lord of my life. And if you get that as a global perspective, then the sickness part of it is going to take care of itself because you're establishing the doctor may be my servant, but he's not my Lord. My bank account may look limited, but that's not my Lord. Jesus is my source. The political system looks screwed up, but that's not my Lord. That doesn't change where my true citizenship is, nor what my purpose is. It doesn't change my value to God as a person. And so enough with this limitation, these mental limitations, emotional limitations, physical limitations, 
I'm changing kingdoms. If, I, if that is a need you have and you declare from this moment on, in every situation that comes up, I'm going to declare Jesus is Lord of this situation. I'm going to go see what he says about it. I'm going to go to his word and find out what his promises are about this. I want to know what my Lord says. I don't care what the old lords say because they're not my lords anymore. If you'll make the switch, if you'll make the switch in your, in your thinking and get a revelation of this, you'll start to see these other lords looking for employment. Because they're not employed in your life anymore. You're going to start getting set free. I'm getting free as I speak this. Praise God. How do we do this? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.18. I became a teacher to bless me. <laughs> and you guys get to get in on it too. 2 Corinthians. Praise God. 4.18. While we look, not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, let's put it in the context of what we're talking about today. While we look not at the Lord's which are seen or felt, but at the Lord which is not seen, Jesus, the Word. For the things or the Lord's which are seen are temporal. The doctor, the banker, the lawyer, the sickness. Those things are temporal, meaning subject to change. But the things, so let's change it to the Lord, which is not seen, is eternal. Or in other words, to change, we have to change what we see. I teach this all the time in different ways. But you, you have two sets of eyes. You have, you have natural eyes and you have spiritual eyes. And most of us live 99.9% .9 of our lives with natural eyes. And we see everything going on around us and we evaluate it, we process it, we judge it, and then we assimilate it into our lives based on our five senses, most predominantly what we see and what we hear. Those two are probably quite equal. If you want to move into another dimension where you get loosed from the lordship of things and physical things and whatever and move into the lordship of Jesus, you've got to start seeing him with your other set of eyes. And if something comes against you physically or financially or in any other way, immediately switch eyes. Switch eyes. Switch off the natural eyes and look, at, look to Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Praise God. And you begin to look and you begin to decide, can I see myself past this? Can I see myself five years down the road living the abundant life? Can I see myself two years down the road living the abundant life? Can I see myself still happily married? Can I see myself with my children and my grandchildren? Can I still see myself in ministry? Can I still see myself in spite of this temporary thing that's coming against me that wants me to get my eyes on it? I'm not taking my eyes off of Jesus. I'm going to keep looking with spiritual eyes. Why? Because he's my Lord. The thing that just came by is not my Lord. The thing that's trying to attach itself to me is not my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You have to open your spiritual eyes because Lord Jesus is spirit. Amen? And as we determine to do this, folks, this is a decision that we have to make in our hearts. If we determine to do this and say, okay, I hear that, I see that, but... I'm going back, I'm go I, I just was down here for a visit, I'm going back to where I should be seated, amen, in heavenly places. I'm going to take a look around there real quick and remind myself of who my Lord is and what my position in Christ is and what this little tiny sickness is all about. I step on it, I curse it, I rebuke it, it does not have authority in my life. Lordship, Lordship, who is Lord? Who is Lord in your life?
I feel like I've, I've given what I've had, had for you this morning or this afternoon. And I, I'm just sensing, I want to spend some time ministering to you. Can we do that? And, and let's just stand up and let's just make some declarations. You can make them out loud or into your own spirit, your own heart. But I just want to, to minister this a little bit and, and pray and just believe God for some, some moves of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. And this includes people watching online. Praise God. And whoever sees this in the future, take hold of this word and reestablish the true lordship of Jesus Christ in your life. Father, we bless your name. We, we lift up your name and we declare you are Lord. We submit ourselves to you. We will not submit ourselves to any other whether it be a person or an affliction or a concept or a lie or an atmosphere, whatever it might be that's not you, we refuse to submit to it. Like blind Bartimaeus, we will not be intimidated. We will not be fearful. We are not inferior. Like the woman with the issue of blood, we are not bound up in legalism, religiosity, we are free, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We know the truth, and the truth is making us free. We are, making, we are being made free to submit to the Lordship of the one who loves us, the one who has healed us, the one who has delivered us, the one who has set us free to live the abundant life. And with everything within us, Father, in the name of Jesus, we break off these false lords these other lords that come to steal and to kill and to destroy. And we declare Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord of our lives. Jesus is Lord of our health. Jesus is Lord of our bodies. And I begin now to speak to the bodies, to the physical bodies in this room and those that are watching online, those that will watch in the future. Receive your healing now. Receive your Lord now. Receive the Lordship of Jesus in your life, which brings healing with it. It's a package deal. Praise God. And we break off the words of fake lords that have declared that we are, will suffer, that we won't live a full life, that we won't have a normal life, that we're just going to have to put up with it. All of these words of men, these words of darkness, perhaps they're well-meaning, but they can't see what we see. They haven't heard what we've heard. And we break off those words, we break off that fear, we break off that doubt. We break off those constraining forces that have kept us held captive to superstitions and to law, to sickness. And we say enough of it, enough of it in the name of Jesus. And we speak the Lordship of Jesus. I speak the Lordship of Jesus into every person watching, listening in this room right now. The Lordship of Jesus in your body. The Lordship of Jesus in your brain. Freedom for your brain. Cleansing for your brain. The Lordship of Jesus in your heart. The physical organ of your heart. We establish Jesus is Lord. The Lordship of Jesus in your lungs. The Lordship of Jesus in every organ. Your stomach, your intestines, every part of your body. We establish the Lordship of Jesus. The Lordship of Jesus in our bones. The Lordship of Jesus in our muscles, in our tendons, in our ligaments. We establish Jesus is Lord. Jesus is life. Jesus is health. Jesus is healing. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Praise God. The Lordship of Jesus in, in, the, in the feminine parts of, of the ladies that are present. The Lordship of Jesus. The Lordship of Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus in every cell of our bodies. Just get crazy with me and just picture the throne of Jesus and Jesus seated on the throne in every cell of your body. And where Jesus is, healing is. Life is. Praise God. We resist. We resist every work of the enemy. Every spirit of infirmity, we cast you out now in Jesus' name. Blindness, deafness, limitations of any kind, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. 
We speak life into our flesh, lordship, life into our flesh, the knitting together of flesh, the healing, the restoration, the recreation. Just travel through your body and in your imagination and with the spiritual eyes that you have. Flow with the Spirit of God through every part of your body and see healing and health taking place. What you're doing is you're establishing lordship, that you're going to submit only to Jesus the Lord. Only to Jesus the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we have this access to your lordship. We come boldly before the throne of grace. And we say, we're done with the lords of corruption, the lords of the world, the lords of lack, the lords of limitations, the lords of fear, the lords of sickness. We're done with those. And we declare Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Let's just pray in the Spirit for a moment. If you will, just lift your hands, worship him. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We receive your life. We receive your life, spirit, soul, and body. We receive it into us. We bow the knee to your lordship. Your lordship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We receive healing right now. Bodies are being healed right now. Bodies are being set free right now. Organs are being healed and restored right now. Clogged arteries and veins are being opened right now. Arthritis is disappearing right now. Blood is being cleansed right now in the name of Jesus. Lungs are opening. Stomach issues are disappearing right now. Intestinal issues are disappearing right now in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is Lord. Bone issues are being resolved in Jesus' name. Tendon issues, muscle issues are being resolved in Jesus' name. Scoliosis is leaving in Jesus' name. Other strains, other pulls, other tears, everything is being restored in Jesus' name because Jesus is Lord. And we've had enough of those phony lordships. Hallelujah, Father. Only you are Lord, Father, of every cell of our beings. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want to invite the prayer ministers to come forward. And, and those of you that would like to come forward and agree in prayer and just stand on what you've heard today and receive your healing, please do so. Amen. I literally stumbled upon the destiny, the call, the purpose God had for me all along here at Karis. One of the things that stood out to me more than probably anything else is just the whole community of Karis people. They're amazing, uh, very receptive, very loving, very genuine, and I was able to mesh right in. Discover your destiny. Prepare to live it. KarisBibleCollege.org